What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Noah Rad89 here, bringing you another review today, and you know what time it is. We're making our way through the Halloween franchise onto Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Very divisive film, because a lot of people say this is the start of the very bad films within the franchise. So, my opinion might not be a popular one, so let's get into this. And of course, we're going to be talking spoilers, so if you haven't seen it, you have to go run out and watch it, and then come back so you can talk about it with me. Now let's get into this video. So Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Oh man, 1989, the year I was born. So this is a pretty one like just for me because I was like growing up, I didn't know it was like really came out the year I was born, but growing up, this was one I did fancy a lot when I was younger. But of course, we have to get the bad things out of the way first because there are some really negative things about this film that you might have to overlook. If you're a true Halloween fan, you're probably not going to enjoy it and everything like that. And I really do love the Halloween franchise, but I'm going to tell you after we get into these negatives why I like the film. So right off the bat, Dominique Oath and Gerard, our director, a director that is a very bad director for this franchise that had no real focus with this film and didn't pay enough attention to the details in this movie. So that's probably the biggest negatives for me in this in this film is that there are like a lot of details, like little things that he didn't pay attention to. And some of the stuff that got added into this film is an example of too many cooks in the kitchen, which is a big problem for me when you can tell when you're watching a film, if it's one or two people's cohesive idea, it has a better flow. You can see it in the film when you're watching it, but when you're watching a movie and you can tell that more people had ideas and this person said this and this person wanted to add this, you can tell that there was too many cooks in the kitchen and just too many voices happening while in pre-production. This is also one of the lowest grossing Halloween films within the franchise, and I think that's mainly because a lot of people thought the way that Halloween 4 ended, Dwight Little and them, the way they wrote it, it just kind of finalized Michael. They thought it was over. That was kind of the end of Michael Myers, and Jamie was now taking the nod of being the next one, especially with that ending scene. So this film was a very divisive, unpopular film, I think, in general, just because of the way it was marketed, the way it was happening. A lot of people were like, oh, like, why is Michael coming back? Like, what? Like, you know, this dude's dead. But now we're going to get into the things that I do like about this movie, even though there are, like I said, those huge negatives in the beginning. For me, one of the key things I like about this film is it does have a good vibe to it for me. I think the central story of following Daniel Harris's character as she's kind of like distraught and, you know, has like this kind of PTSD thing going on where she can't, you know, she doesn't speak. She's very closed off and shut down now because of what happened to her with Michael Myers. And like, oh, I thought that central story is really good to me. And bringing her back and Rachel, I think was a good idea too. We also have Donald Pleasance coming back as Samuel Loomis. So we have these reoccurring key still characters in this film that keep it very central and connected to that fourth film. Then we have our Michael Myers, played by Donald Shanks. I love the mask. I love his portrayal of Michael. I think that was on point. All that stuff was key for me because that fourth film, that was my main biggest problem with that film was that the Michael Myers, I didn't enjoy that Michael Myers or the mask, like the look of him or anything. This one I think is a lot better in terms of the design of him. And uh, that's that's probably one of the only few things that Dominique Oath and Gerard changed really. That was his thing that I liked was the mask. He actually, his idea to change the mask, I thought was a good idea, even though a lot of fans didn't like it because, you know, it didn't, it was, it was a detail that, you know, people were like, what, what's going on? Like another one, like something else, like even the Myers house at the end looks very different from the Michael Myers house in the original films. But as our story progresses, we find, you know, as Michael Myers wakes up from a year long coma and wakes up on Halloween to go after Jamie and Rachel to take out his revenge, Ah, that's another thing that people are bothered by is he takes out Rachel in the first 25 minutes in this film, which really didn't bother me when I was younger and doesn't bother me that much when I was older either. The only thing that bothers me is finding out why they did that, the change. Like, I really thought it was just like a connective thing in the story. They were like, we want him to come, you know, revenge of Michael Myers. He's coming to get them. He's finally going to kill them and he's going to move on to somebody else. But, you know, I thought it was kind of cool that aspect but when you find out that Oath and Gerard changed it because he just wanted his heroin to be brunette like dark haired at the end I was just like ah that's like a weak thing you know what I mean it's just it's a weak thing man like you know so that's like showing you you're not really a great director when you want to just change something on a whim kind of like that 
So after Rachel dies, we are hooked on to another heroine in this film, Tina. And I really think Tina is a great character. A lot of people have a problem with her. think she's the most obnoxious character in any slasher film, which that is completely ridiculous. That is just it's just batshit crazy. I don't think that's legit at all. Tina's a great character. It's just she's a character that represents somebody of those times, the late 80s, you know, and she's like that kind of party girl, chill, you know, auntie type hangout chick or sister that you want to chill with. She'll let you drink maybe, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. That's this kind of person that Tina is. And she plays that role very well within this film, the actress. So I had no problem with her character. And as I said, this film also is the one where I saw Daniel Harris to be a real true actress a lot of people are bothered by the way her character was written and how she was performing in this film, but I thought it was muy perfecto. Daniel Harris slamming it in home all the fucking time because she's such a great actress, and that's why I was like, you need to keep her in this franchise. So I'm glad Rob Zombie ended up bringing her back in the later ones, but we'll talk about that as we when we get to those ones. But for me, uh, Halloween 5, it might be nostalgia. It might be member berries or something. That's why I really like this film, but I said those things... I like the score. I like the intro title sequence, even though it doesn't say Revenge of Michael Myers. I like the intro title sequence. I like the central story between Michael and Daniel Harris, how she could see his murders and she doesn't talk. And, you know, I like I just like all that stuff. And I like seeing Samuel Loomis back. I had no problem with Rachel dying in the beginning, just the reason they decided to change it or do that in the story, which I would have much rather just been like, oh, it was our creative thing. I wanted to do it because he came out and said that he wanted to make Daniel Harris the good girl or like a good person. He didn't want to carry on with her being the killer because he wanted her to be innocent and honest. And he thought being her being the killer was more predictable, which I actually kind of agree with that. But, oh, man, like I said, it might be nostalgia or member berries, but I still really do like Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. I do somewhat have a better time with this film than Halloween 4, and some people might be like, that's blasphemy. But guess what? This is my channel. It's my opinion, and I really do like this film. This film's going to get a 7.5 out of 10. It's a film that I return to, and I think there are other Halloween films in this franchise that are more of a disgrace and really worse than this film. So... If you haven't seen Halloween 5 in a long time, I urge you to go revisit this film. Yes, there's some attention that could have been paid to the details and a lot of things going on behind the scenes in production, but uh, if you can get over these little things, I think there's a good central story in this one. And that third act, carrying on with the car chase, going to the Myers house, I thought all that stuff was really cool. I was happy with it. And then Tina's death, I like, ugh, I got emotional with that too. So this film, it grabs me. It has me. You know, Halloween 5 was, is the bomb. Compared to Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, which is like... <clears throat> This one actually grabbed me and was a good film. Thanks for sticking around with me all for another review. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe so you can stay with me on this journey of the Halloween films. Next, we're going to be on to Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Oh, we're not supposed to call it Halloween 6. It's just Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, but we're going to get into that one pretty soon. So remember, stay tuned to the channel and have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.